Hare Krishna, Adi Shampru. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. So, Pru, today I thought we could discuss a topic which uh, often comes up in, in devotional circles, especially when we are confronted with uh, very urgent and pressing problems. Say mm-hmm. like recently the Bangladesh attacks happened on the Hindu community and on the devotees in particular. So, you know, what does depending on Krishna mean? To what extent does it mean, say, we, we leave everything in Krishna's hands? And to what extent does yeah. it mean that we take some things in our hands? So, in one sense, there are both aspects of Bhakti. And sometimes I put this as uh, like dependence on Krishna and diligence for Krishna. That mm-hmm. Prabhupada's model of surrender is raising her hands. She's dependent on yeah. Krishna. But Arjuna's model of surrender is raising his bow to fight. Sarva Dharma he says, Krishna says, Arjuna says, yes, I'll surrender to you. But the surrender is raising his hands to fight. Raising his arms. Yeah. So in one sense, depending on Krishna is not simply passively leaving everything in Krishna's hands. It's also taking some, doing something for Krishna. So it's an important topic. I thought we could discuss that today. So what, what are your thoughts about this bro? at an introductory level? And then you can go into specifics. Yeah. Hmm. Oh my Jnana Timiranda said, Jnana Anjana Shalakaya, Chakshavan Militam Yena, Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha. Uh, there is a famous saying, God helps those who help themselves. So uh, this uh, point sometimes is considered by certain religions as a lack of surrender. Uh, they say that, oh, God helps those who help themselves. Mean then, if you take initiative, you don't depend on God, uh, then uh, they consider it as a lack of surrender. On the other hand, there is also uh, devotees of God who say that we should do our part and then we leave the rest to God. Uh, like we say, you know, do your best and then let Krishna do the rest. You know, uh, like uh, Krishna himself says, karma neva adhikaraste and mafareshu kadachana. So the word karma neva adhikaraste says, concentrate on your duty. And mafareshu kadachana says, be detached. And Ma Karma Falahetur Bhur says, from doership to divine. And Ma Karma Falahetur Bhur, Mate uh, Sangos Tokarmani. Yeah, that means stick to duty. And that means, you know, don't be lethargic. Uh, when you know that the fruits are not in my hand, don't be lethargic. So, this is a very important verse which gives us a clue uh, when uh, recent Bangladesh events had happened. Uh, some of the people who replied back to me, wrote to me, uh, said, what is this? You people are giving lecture on sermons on peace, peace and everything. Huh? Take the arms and fight the battle. You can't be waiting for Krishna to take care of you. Take care of yourself now. <laughs> this kind of uh, statement some people sent. So how I replied, I can tell you. Uh, I replied that, uh, okay, let us say that I take a sword or I take a gun, I protect myself you know, protect my body. And he says, throw away the bid bag. Just <laughs> take the sword and gun in the hand. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, even if you protect your body, tomorrow our body will be finished by a snake bite mm-hmm. or can be finished by an ac- a road accident or something or it can be finished by some deadly disease or even if one escapes all these things, then the death has to come to everybody today or tomorrow. Huh? The body is perishable. It is going to be consumed by the passage of time or by something else. Mm-hmm. It is going to be destroyed. The soul is imperishable. And I am not the body, I am the spirit soul. I know it. So that doesn't mean I should be careless about the body. I should let the body be destroyed by somebody. Why should I protect my body? Because it is Krishna's property. And Krishna has given me for using it in large service so that I can purify my heart. Shariram Kala Dharma Sadhanam, it is said. So it's a Dharma Sadhan for me. And it's helping me to purify my heart and go back to Krishna. So I want to preserve my body for that sake. So what best can I do? Say so I am a Brahmana. A yeah, Brahmana actually uh, lives by the um, scriptural injunctions. We actually, we unnecessarily don't cause violence to any living, living entity. 
at all. Uh, and uh, at the same time, for self-defense, uh, we uh, have to give uh, teachings to the people in such a way that, like for example, a Brahmana can give a lecture uh, based on the scriptures, how all religions can coexist. See, every religion so, wants to expand, so, saying so, that... We, sorry, yeah. I mean, a lot of points coming in. If you don't mind, yeah. one, one point a little bit. So, yeah. See, you talk about karmandeva. First, you talk about God helps those who help themselves. Yeah, correct. I This can be taken in two ways. One is that if you are helping yourself, there is no need for God at all. And that's what... No. That, Direction which you were taking, it's like some skeptics may take it like that. Uh, some skeptics take like that. So, the, so that I, is, actually, our capacity, our capacity is small. We are one, and God is infinity. Yeah. When we have we have done our one, if I have done my one, and beyond that, uh, it is in God's hands. Like I sow the seed, God gives the rains. You know, I fight the battle, and Krishna has to give the results ultimately. I do my part, like Jatayu, for example. He fought the battle valiantly to the to his best. And then, uh, of course, he didn't, materially speaking, he didn't win the battle, Jatayu. Yes. But spiritually, he attained Vaikuntha. Why he spiritually attained Vaikuntha? Because Lord Ram was sufficiently pleased <laughs> by his endeavor itself. That is true. And the same manner, the squirrel, the squirrel made his little endeavor in uh, putting some small stones and Lord Rama was completely pleased. So I have made one very simple point in my life and I may make a small, tiny endeavor according to my minuscule capabilities. But if Guru and Krishna are pleased, that is the gold standard for perfection. Okay. Yes. So just one minute. I mean, I, I appreciate what you're saying. But maybe we could start from a level where for many people, pleasing hmm. in itself can seem like too lofty and otherworldly a goal. Yeah. And right now, people are being killed and uh, yeah. something practical. And yes, it's yeah. a Krishna. But I would yeah. say just as explain this point about God helps those who help themselves. One example yes. would be that that means we only have to help ourselves and there's no need to worship God or yeah. God. Oh, so for example, how do we help ourselves? I can tell you yes, simple things. Complete my point if you don't mind. That could be one yeah. extreme. And the other extreme could be that <clears throat> that the way we help ourselves is only by chanting Hare Krishna or practicing bhakti and not oh. else. So we could if you consider <laughs> extremes of that. One is yeah, yeah. Our efforts alone will protect us and we don't have to do any effort to protect ourselves. God alone will do everything. So we could say, yeah, correct. as you are saying is that we do our part and Krishna does his part. And Correct. Yeah. So I can tell you about what, what part we should do. Yeah. What part we should do. That about well, the point of we being Brahmanas and we, we can give talks. No, not only Brahmanas. Yeah, not only being Brahmanas. Say, for example... The tigers and lions live in the forest and our uh, humans live in the country and tigers don't come uh, to the human zone and humans don't go to the forest zone. There's a separation, correct, no? In the same manner, there are ignorant people who, who have malicious intent and they are not preachable and they are not understandable. They are not guidable and they can come as a mob and they can actually be very harmful. Huh? And uh, if that is the case, our Brahminical preaching will not, you know, will neither protect us nor purify them and elevate them. Uh, in such a case, what should a devotee do? I would say that first we should have very good defense mechanism in our temples, uh, certainly. Mm -hmm. You know, all, all the religious institutions have the right to take uh, permission from the government for self-protection in their own respective temples. Like, like, for example, the security at the gate the security of the members of the temple, you know, the security for the, like, just like, for example, we have a, a fire extinguisher in case there is a fire. Is it not true? Mm -hmm. in, the, in the same manner, there should be a protection mechanism in case there is a mob which attacks the temple. And there has to be a protective mechanism. Like, for example, if you take certain IT companies, the IT companies right opposite to one of the IT companies in Pune, they have a military a camp of just three, four gunmen. Uh, they have, uh, and nobody, no unwanted elements can enter into the company. And if they do ever, then uh, not only the four gunmen will come, they can get 400 people immediately. Because these gunmen are there, right there to keep a watch and they have a tower also and they're watching and uh, to protect the organization because millions and millions of dollars are involved in such companies, isn't it? 
So every organization, whether it be IT company or a religious institution, everybody has the right to protect themselves. There should be some mechanism for protection they should work out and uh, uh, with some of their intelligence here. Um, so I had mentioned in my talk that there are Kshatriyas, you know, who are supposed to protect. Now should the Brahmanas wait for the leaders of the country to take an action? And if the leaders don't take a swift action, that there may be a lot of damage caused. So before the damages can be caused, <clears throat> Everybody uh, should uh, find out ways and means to protect themselves to the best of their ability. Because that every human has a right to live. Um, everyone has a right to protect themselves. So, like for example, uh, we have many religious institutions where they have big temples and there are also smaller temples. And there are some remote villages where they may have temples also. And to the degree the projects are smaller and in remote places, they may not have enough money to increase their protection also. Hmm. Sometimes it may it may so happen, and they may also not think that such dangers may come. Sometimes, if you find even in the past, you know there had been uh, mobs attacking religious riots. They happen once in a century. Sometimes, huh? once or twice in a century, it happens. It doesn't happen pretty often. So people also think because it doesn't happen every now and just like tsunami comes once in a while, uh, like in a twin towers crash. Once in a while, huh? yeah, that is in a planes crash once in a while. So people keep going in the planes, and this is what is a challenge for us. I would say that even though it happens very rarely, there should always be protective mechanism in all our projects huh? because we have temples, we have deities, we have devotees. You know, uh, we have visitors, pedestrians. We have to protect. But we will see that sometimes, despite all of our protective mechanism, uh, things may go beyond our control. Hmm? At the time, we should make our effort. Offer the best protection and then accept it as you know, Lord's will. Uh, after having done our best, that's what I was telling. We should do our best. Um, like in my talk, I was telling that yes, we can also have point students point. that, yeah. So, the thing this point about uh, having adequate defensive arrangements. So, yes, that's, that's one thing. That's, yeah, that's two distinct aspects to this. You know, yeah. one is that. Uh, like you, you know that uh, the example of a security com of IT company having mm -hmm. uh, hiring a security agency. Correct. So there are, in my understanding, there are four different levels. Mm -hmm. At one level, like if there is a Kshatriya government, an ideal Kshatriya government, then the government, it's at one level, the government's responsibility to protect. Correct. So and now that may or may not happen. Correct. In the world. So then yeah. there is a responsibility where the Say the movement or the organization hires some security agency, and that Correct, yeah. everywhere. I mean, almost all yeah. high-rise buildings, high-rise companies today have their own security yeah. in the government. It's not in yeah. the government, but it complements the government. Correct. Yeah. To the extent we as a movement also have this in our temples, and many prominent temples beyond our movement also have this. So I think yeah, that's yeah. not really a debatable thing. What comes as a debate is the third and fourth levels. Third and the third level could be that there could be people, not just professional security agencies or the government, but there could be members who follow that broad dharma who themselves have mm. Kshatriya inclination. Yeah. Then they could be cultivated at some level. And then yeah. these, these sometimes become a little uh, how should I porous categories, but I'll just make the third and fourth difference. And the fourth could be, there could be people who are already devotees, who yeah. are in Kshatriya nature. That means yeah. that in our outreach, we focus on cultivating, at least in Pune, we focus on cultivating engineering students because we found that that was receptive. And then yeah. basically we can cultivate others also. So what happens is that the third and fourth, and especially the fourth, yeah. when devotees start feeling angry, I feel I should do mm -hmm. something. So yeah. now there are some devotees who may well have a Kshatriya nature. And yeah. unless they do something, they will feel very restless. Yeah. The challenge is that sometimes their restlessness, instead of being <laughs> instructed to do something, it simply ends up making everybody restless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we are not doing anything. You're not doing anything. You're not doing anything. You're simply spending Hare Krishna, not doing anything practical. So this is not just a criticism from outside. I think it can come yeah. inside when devotees start feeling restless. Yeah. So I think this fourth level, it has to be very carefully decided that yeah. which, you know, which devotee has that uh, 
so you could say the psychophysical nature to actually yeah. to maybe learn some self defense or do something like that and without say without losing their grounding in their uh, bhakti in their spirituality because this yeah. very uh, once one starts getting into this it can be very yeah. irritating to the mind yeah in one sense while you said that some things happen once in a century or once in a decade but yeah. at a small level things keep happening sometimes big things when they happen they come in the news mm. and now social media available and every single once one gets interested in a particular area then you can constantly keep hearing oh this thing happened there and that thing happened there and that thing happened there and people when well, the mind can get completely consumed by that so yeah could you talk about this third and fourth level about we cultivating yeah. we cultivating or connecting with groups which are following dharma and have kshatriya yeah. nature and yeah. devotees who might have kshatriya who might want to do something maybe something yeah. talk about that a little bit yeah 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 <laughs> actually i i i would say that in uh, devotees having kshatriya nature there are uh, three levels in which they can operate one is you know they could become leaders of the country like mlas mps and chief ministers prime ministers like that that's one category another category they can go for upsc exams and ips and ifs and you know the, those kind of things uh, 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 leadership they can take because there are there are like 20000 bureaucrats in india who are the intelligentsia of india you know and if uh, people with proper grounding in sarve janaha sukhino bhavantu sarve sant niramaya sarve bhadrani pashyantu ma kashya dukkha bhavave that means may all living entities live happily because all are god's children and they have the right to live so we people with that script correct script in a correct map of life they should become leaders of the country and they should actually protect not only their own dharma they should protect every dharma in the country they should actually facilitate Mm. Uh, every dharma's protection and ensure that uh, no children no god child hurt each other uh, so this is one type of leadership i was second type of leadership i would say so first and then the third politician first of all was the mla uh, mla mp is and all those uh, people politician second one is this kind of leadership uh, upsc through upsc mm. and the uh, and the third uh, third type of uh, leadership is i would tell them join kadakwasla nda <laughs> you know they can join join army navy air force such kinds of things and take training for 6 7 years short service commission and then you have earned enough you become a ex serviceman or something and then come to different temples and offer protection to those temples isn't it yeah. so so yeah. what i what i am talking now here prabhu is something very practical tangible implementable things we should talk isn't it otherwise many times as you rightly said the fourth category of people they have very volatile brain huh? uh very volatile brain fourth category means okay the inner, the devotees who are <laughs> yeah. yeah okay right yeah. i said volatile brain means they keep talking about what happened in the history in the past you know he did this and he did that yeah so many people did so many things like uh, like for example it is not only religious right if you see our uh, hitler for example dealing with the jews 10 million jews he wanted to wipe out huh? uh some people actually think that if i if you wipe out the other class we can be happy you know dhruva maharaj wanted to wipe out the yakshas and he was given good advice and he was saved janma jay wanted to wipe out the race of uh, snakes yes. uh, because one snake bit his father and he was also uh, given good advice and they refrained from ac- acting so huh? so you will find in the same manner that have been a racism in different countries whites and blacks and all those things so you will find all across the globe it's not only between one particular religion and another religion this kind as long as there is fanaticism in this world these kinds of riots are bound to be there and there has to be protective mechanism mm. yes. uh, so therefore the one which i told you till now is the third category which you were talking about on a practical level i told you what could be done and the fourth category of people who are talking about it lot we, we can tell them do something practical if you are so concerned about protection go and do something practical <laughs> that is true i think so there are two things over here hmm. what you said is that uh, it is especially if one psychophysical nature hmm. is of a kshatriya and then that person feels it is it is possible that they will feel that brahmanical activities are too otherworldly and not practical correct but then the, i think one of the biggest challenges in our movement or i would say not just in our movement you could say in general across religious society is that 
that when we start valuing a particular activity mm. it's almost become like a corollary that we start devaluing anyone who doesn't appreciate that activity yeah so if i am doing something which is a kshatriya thing and yes it's one it's good if you can do it but then anybody who doesn't sympathize with equal enthusiasm or support with equal enthusiasm the cause mm. the tendency is to start devaluing that person devaluing their activities and that is where the challenge comes up yeah so yes, yeah good classification in terms of professional areas today i talk, i talked about i also had a podcast on this i talked about the sam dam bhed and dand correct approaches that could be used yeah so i was talking with some devotees in the communications department yeah and they're telling that how uh, especially in european countries there are some some countries are recognized by the government some yeah. the religions are recognized by the government and if they are recognized by the government and they get a lot of support from the government mm. so for example in in the we have the krishna avanti school in uk yeah and then the whole education yeah is funded by the government for the children and okay. we teach our krishna consciousness not directly mm. we can teach hinduism and krishna consciousness as a part of hinduism yeah everything is funded by the government yeah but there are many european countries where hinduism is not yet recognized as a religion yeah it is hinduism but it's not recognized so that means not supported by the government mm. like that so this is somewhere where we as a movement yeah as a you could say not just beyond a movement a group of people who have similar values yeah the protection of dharma yeah so so the sam dam bhed so danda would be the approach primarily by the defense and the security forces yeah sam dam danda would be the approach is used your through diplomacy and administration yeah Mm. this is in <clears throat> classification in one sense uh, the kshatriya role yeah in today's world has become diversified in the past we have yudhishthir would fight and yudhishthir would also administer justice yeah correct in one sense in today's world the kshatriya role has become you could say not only three but it's actually four oh, this is the fourth one yeah judiciary also judiciary also affects things quite a bit mm. so the kshatriya role was also adjudicating cases yeah so of course you could put judiciary within the administration yeah it's not exactly administration it's slightly different yeah but uh, kshatriyas had all these roles in the past mm like you said doing diplomacy doing administration doing defense yeah so what we are talking today comes in administration where the law and order in the country has to be kept the thieves and rogues have to be curtailed the terrorists have to be put behind the bars you know that is coming in administration like you know like when uh, when, uh, when uh, before vena became the king you know when there was no king when anga was not there immediately there was disturbance in society yes exactly so, we we'll talk about that example also yeah Going so the later on when yeah when vena was posted immediately everything subdued so therefore the law and order has to be upheld because the, the country head he has got first of all you know police force above that commandos you know the army force so there I mean, wherever there is irregular behavior it has to be subdued yes I get uh, yeah so just going back to your earlier point you made a very interesting point about about how if devotees enter into any of these fields like defense mm. or security yeah, or, yeah. then they need to uh, if if some devotees are devotionally minded people then they have to protect all religions not just krishna consciousness correct yeah so that also to some extent uh, is indicative of a secular ethos of course the word secularism is misapplied or misunderstood in today's world mm-hmm. but broadly speaking it is that uh, sarva dharma samabhavana yeah yeah of course that concept i think is in the popular culture is attributed to gandhi ji but i think it is intrinsic to the vedic ethos also broadly speaking correct yeah isn't it and i think it was bhakti nath thakur who first in gita commentary talks about in that sambhavami yuga yuga purport yeah then the sense and the lord sometimes sends his son or his representative correct. yeah like jesus mohammed yeah he makes it broad yeah correct much bit beyond uh, just the what happens in aryavarta you could say yeah so that's interesting that uh, so when there is secularism where so in principle mm. secularism as a ideal of you could say a religious impartiality correct correct that's true yeah that is something which is quite acceptable or not even just acceptable compatible with the 
broad ethos of the bhagavad gita yeah isn't it yeah so that's why earlier you also mentioned this point that we have to talk about how this fanaticism is not yeah. necessarily associated with any particular religious then, <laughs> correct yeah that is true <laughs> it is more it is it's a trait it's a trait the devil trait uh, that resides in an impure heart yeah it's almost like it's a expression of rajoguna and tamoguna correct that's true yeah. going down towards tamoguna in a severe way yeah and it can happen yeah uh, because like, you know re- recently i was hearing one interesting thing like you know they have found that the sound if it is produced at a certain frequency for a prolonged period of time it can cause even death of a human huh? like that they have found out so now some countries are thinking about what is that sound and what will be the amplitude and how we can use it in army they are thinking <laughs> so it is, it is actually quite well known so it's called it's like the word used is sonic torture ah sonic torture yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so why i was quoting the example Yeah. as soon as there is some new invention or innovation you know that kind of minds what they think oh how i can use it to fanatical minds want to use it for troubling and torturing other creatures unnecessarily you know therefore the first thing says ahimsa satya asteya brahmacharya and aprahyamaha so first word is ahimsa is you know living being should be allowed to injure another living being unnecessarily because every living being has a right to live because everyone is a god's child and they have the right to live this basic tenet should be underlying tenet of life should be taught everywhere jiyo dine do actually that is the uh, spiritual world huh? in spiritual world jiyo dine do principle is the principle material world means jivo jivasya jivanam you know and therefore protective mechanisms are required mm. <laughs> that's that's true it's in one sense uh krishna also talks about how all people are on his path it doesn't say this is the only path mamu vartamana vartante manushya partha sarvashya yeah so now there is this question that comes up that that you know we may want to accept other paths now, sometimes the discussion becomes a little uh how should i say inflamed mm. when we focus on one particular uh, religion or ideology correct it more as a Uh, a manifestation of rajo and tamoguna hmm you can actually look at it more with a shastra chakshu correct in our particular sectarian issues yeah mm-hmm. so two things i wanted to ask mm-hmm. about this that uh, when we talk about rajas and tamas mm-hmm. and manifestations of that yeah effectively speaking uh, there could be particular manifestations which are uh how should i put it which are more dangerous than others which are more hostile historical yeah. more hostile or even contemporary world there can be more hostility yeah it could be a particular religion hmm. it could also be a particular non religious ideology say for example yeah. communism has yeah. hostile to religion yeah the communism as a political ideology has fallen hmm. this ideology is still there in the world yeah and they are often quite intolerant toward religion yeah so, to what extent uh, do you think as devotees we need to be concerned about particular ideologies and address those ideological challenges because now while fanaticism can come everywhere yeah but like hitler's fanaticism was targeted primarily toward jews yes correct so jews had to be concerned about that yeah similarly there could be particular uh, you could say religious or non religious ideologies yeah fanaticism may target as and our tradition and uh, so in that sense yeah it's about whether we need to specifically prepare for that or generically if we prepare these will be automatically able to address yeah you see what is that uh, script which makes this world a hellish place is proprietorship controllership and joyship these three things everybody wants to become proprietor now i i, I show it in an action like this you see proprietorship controllership and joyship you know one wants to enjoy like this so you say alexander he wanted to proprietorship irena kashipu wants more proprietorship bali maharaj wants proprietorship not only of this earth they want all the three worlds bali maharaj and irena uh, kashipu and all if you see alexander wanted at least uh, dhritarashtra proprietorship everyone wanted now after proprietorship what they do 
they want to permeate their kingdom all over the world and then they take over the rule and after that controllership make other people into slaves and then you lord over them you know and the lording bossing over them then you enjoy it then you enjoy uh, so this is actually the fundamental trait of uh, material condition life uh, this propensity is that uh, now it may be in a religion in a certain religious group or it may be you know a little bit if you don't mind yeah if i understand right you know the proprietorship and uh, controllership and joyship mm-hmm. all these three you could say uh in one sense they are intrinsic in the conditioned soul yeah but at the same time yeah we may be expressed in sattva guna rajaguna tamaguna so for example even devatas yeah they have some tendency to to own things to enjoy things but, but they don't encroach yeah they they do it within the boundaries of dharma correct correct that's true asuras did so, so because in today's world if you tell the tell anyone yeah don't be a proprietor that's yeah. going to work <laughs> no, everybody has a tena tak tena gunjita yeah magrada kasya sadanam you have the right to own the quota what is allotted for you yes, but not is. not try to wipe out anybody the wiping out business should be forgotten that's beautifully put that it so when we want to encroach and destroy everybody else that yeah. is, becomes especially destructive that would be tamasic yeah actually you can easily see this point pandavas when they returned from the forest yudhishthira maharaj told krishna and other pandavas all people seem to be happy you know and krishna told they are not happy they are pampered by duryodhana because duryodhana knows you are all returning back now he want to pamper the people so that they will want him to be the king huh? and yudhishthira had a doubt whether we really have to rule at all huh? and krishna said no uh, you know even in the presence of five husbands this fellow is bringing their wife and uh, you know trying to disturb her in the public so he cannot be the king so krishna wanted them to be the king now if you see he was not ready to give even five villages there are two statements in mahabharata duryodhana says uh, i won't give even the tip of the needle you know said that means all the land i won't give but what this is said is very interesting he said we are like uh, a pack of dogs fighting over a piece of meat like that he said how can brothers fight like this i am ready to settle even with five villages but duryodhana had a wiping out program he said you are minority you cannot exist uh-huh. we will finish you so i a pandavayam word is used in bhagavata a pandavayam krishna did not like the idea that the world should be bereft of pandavas he says so therefore uh, in every country there is some majority minority will always be there but everybody has the right to live everybody is a child of god and uh, they, they should have their place to live they should have the resources to live nobody should try to you know you, you see hiranyakashipu wanted to wipe out one small boy and he got destroyed you will see that now kauravas wanted to wipe out the pandavas but kauravas got destroyed you will see that so this very tendency in a human being i live and you die uh, this, this this type of uh, thought is what is making the world uh, as if it's blazing on fire That's everywhere true. yeah so that way even in our although there are wars in our tradition yeah vishter he sent his brothers to for the rajya yagya to conquer yes but in one sense he didn't annex any of the kingdoms yes he allowed all the kingdoms to have their own rule in one yeah. sense culture yeah when some kings opposed then he fought yeah after defeating those kings yeah i think when jarasand was killed it was jarasand's son was it sahadev i think he was installed yeah correct it is not that you you just destroyed their kingdom and annihilated them yeah that he wanted the rulers to live in harmony with dharma yeah that is true. and it's very important to know two very important things in what you said just now one thing is you know whenever the wars were fought they were not affecting the common public jarasandha is fighting one on one duel with bhima <laughs> nobody is affected you know their population is going on peacefully you know whereas in certain cases we find people are going and raping women looting the money you know vandalizing destroying so that was not done one thing and the second thing is so sorry just doing this just yeah. to prevent this point actually even historians yeah. like vedic literature being self congratulatory yeah But there are many historians also for example when alexander came yeah he follows wrote a book called indica uh and there he acknowledges this point he says he alexander he traveled with alexander's army across the globe to come to india yeah he said it was strikingly different in india 
Uh-huh. Wars, civilians were never involved. Yeah, correct. It didn't always. It, he said it doesn't happen in the rest of the world. Yeah. So, so <laughs> protected and civilians being non-involved. Yeah. That was a very striking ethos. So it's. Uh, it seems that uh, uh, if we consider today's warfare, actually, mm. it's almost exactly the opposite. opposite. Terrorist, yeah. terrorist targets civilians only. Yeah, utter foolishness. Yeah. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> and not only that, even in such a battle, in the evening time, the warriors will meet each other and shake hands. They had such friendship. Basically, the question was, who can subdue whom? If you subdue me, you know, I am your slave. If I subdue, you are my slave. Yeah. Isn't the understanding was there. To some extent, this yeah. happened, I think the Second World War also, at least in, oh uh, no, it was First World War, Second World War. First World War, it happened that, you know, when the, in the outside France, when there were trenches. Yeah. And there are the Brit- there are the German and the French forces were in the trenches on two sides. So Christmas, yeah, yeah. And we would sing Christmas carols together. Then uh, this night. Mm. So there are some traces, but I don't think that's very much common in today's world now. Correct. It's very unfortunate. Yeah, and the second thing I also wanted to say when you said that was when Vishnu Maharaj saw that there were many kingdoms and they were not conducting the kingdom in line with, you know, in alignment with God. So the Prabhupada says that. Sometimes the kings would want to ensure that the culture that is upheld in a particular kingdom will actually be purifying and uplifting the people. So they would ask the king, you know, should I wage a war against you or you will pay the tribute and your people will align with, you know, these pure principles. And if people would align with those pure principles and pay a tribute, then he wouldn't disturb their kingdom. Uh It was going like that. And in case the king wouldn't uh, oblige, then he would catch the horse, pass the horse, and then there will be a war. And then when he takes over, why would kings take over another place? And then they would uphold the, uh, the dharma in that place. So the king's purpose is, well, one king has a better script to bring people in alignment with God. In the Vedic times, the war was also fought ultimately for the ultimate good of the world. Not for actually uh, atrocious activities of uh, tormenting, torturing, and killing and uh, looting, cheating. This was not the goal, actually. True. So, we could say that in some ways, the moral lines yeah. were relatively clear. Yeah. As you said that Duryodhan had tried to dishonor Draupadi in public. Yeah. He had abducted Sita. Yeah. So then the moral lines are quite clear in those times. And in one sense, the aggressors had clearly done aggression. Yeah. In this world, sometimes things become a little complicated. Hmm. Who is the actual aggressor? Because both <laughs> that takes time to find out. Yeah, both sides will have their own side of the story. Yeah. So you know, even in, even now in the school textbooks in Pakistan, it is thought that actually India was an Islamic land, hmm. and it has been taken away by the Hindus from Islam, hmm. and it is our royal duty to. Uh, it is our duty. To give back to Allah that which has been stolen from Allah. Mm. But this, that story goes up to a particular point only. Mm. Go beyond a, a few, beyond a thousand years or so. So I think that is where every side will think that they are right. Correct. Overall, we can look at how, I think in the 17th chapter also Krishna talks about how do you know the modes? Yes. The overall lifestyle of a person. Yeah. In that we can know what modes a person is in. Yeah. So, I think these two points which you mentioned are important. So if we come back to our movement right now. Yeah. So we Prabhupada primarily focused on, he said that he's trying to uh, uh, create the culture of Brahmanas. Yes. That was the majority. Of course, he said also he wanted Varnashram. Yeah. The seven purposes of ISKCON that he gave. Yeah. That really doesn't contain anything directly about self-defense or organization like that. It's yeah. correcting the imbalances. Oh, there is one one of the seven statements indirectly hints to that. What is that? Uh, one of the seven statement of purposes says that uh, you know the Varnashrama is there in that. Yeah, I mean Varnashrama. Is a Prabhupada says to create a society which will bring people closer to God and closer to each other. No, that is one point. Later point, it talks about a farm. One of the seven statements talks about. And uh, okay, it's a more natural way of living. Ah, uh, in a more natural way of living, Brahmana Chitra Vaishya Shudra that comes. Yeah, so you could put it that way, of course, to bring yeah. men closer together for the purpose of teaching a simple and more natural way of life. 
Yeah. In that natural way of life, Brahman, Chetra, Vaishya, Shudra, uh, you know, it's like a head and the shoulder and the belly and the legs, all are covered in that. No, yeah, so, no I'm not saying that it's not there. What I'm saying is that in yeah. the proposal, it's not prominent. Yeah. We as a movement, yeah. don't really at this stage, come to that level. Yeah. So, if, uh, if we talk about, we talk about this third and fourth, yeah. Some devotees may do that to some extent, like yeah. they uh, engage in these areas and they yeah. carefully. But apart from what about the third, working together with other, say, Hindu organizations or working together or with other groups? So I was talking about this that you know, in some countries in America, Europe, uh, Hinduism is not recognized as a religion, and the Christian mm-hmm. also doesn't get recognized. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So the devotee who is the communication in charge from Europe, he was telling me that he's, I think, from Belgium. He's from Belgium. He's based in Belgium. So he said for many years, even Islam was not recognized. Mm-hmm. But then, uh, during the 1970s, there was this big fuel crisis. Yes. So the Arabian uh, king, he told the Bel- the, Bel- the, Bel- the, the government of that he told that needed needed fuel. And mm-hmm. the Saudi Arabian king told them that if you want fuel, then you have to recognize Islam as a religion. Okay. And then that time they, they recognized it, and now they have like one of the most beautiful mosques in all of Europe is in their country. Okay. So he was giving this as an example that if uh, if we as a group, if we uh, ISKCON alone is unlikely to have a huge influence on the state government because in a democratic setup we are not that big to be a significant, you could say, a uh, vote bank. Yeah. But we are a part of a larger group. Yeah. And we can, in that sense, have significant leverage. Yeah. So even in the West, although you know, Hindus are among the wealthiest minorities. Mm. So to some extent, uh, the Kshatriya, you could say, Kshatriya works, one of the characters of Kshatriya is resourcefulness. Mm. Kshatriya works work also mean forming alliances with other group yeah. interests. Correct. Isn't it? So collaborations. Yeah, collaborations. Yeah. So, so even the Pandavas, yeah. not everybody on the side of the Pandavas. They, they have a di- dozen alliances. Yeah. And it's That's interesting true. that not everybody on the Pandavas side was necessarily a Vaishnava. Mm. Some of them were even um, Shaivites and worshippers of other devatas also as their Kula Devat. Yeah, they align with them also. So, is there any way you feel that devotees, either individually or our movement collectively, can work with other organizations also? Yeah, you see, uh, what unites multiple organizations, uh, followers of Sanatan Dharma, is the Brahminical culture. So, Brahminical culture can be put very simply as A B C D E F G H. I can put it A for absolute truth. B for Brahmanas, C for cows, D for demigods, E for etiquettes and uh, behavior, and F means flee to the lotus feet of Vishnu, and uh, G means goodness, sattva, and H means holy name. Huh? So it's a Brahminical culture. Hmm. That's nice. Okay. So now any organization which agrees with this Brahmin, cow should be protected, and uh, others should not be injured unnecessarily, and there is one supreme God. And all of us have to ultimately align with him, uh, salute him. Uh, you will find there are all this, this is called commonality, as we say, no? Um, uh, like there are uh, 25, 30 such organizations uh, which actually come together, which agree with these principles. And uh, there may be some differences amongst them. Um, but when they overall agree that, you know, ultimately we all come from one God, we have to go back to him. Uh, and we have to actually not injure one another. And we have to actually be given the freedom to express our devotion to God. Uh, and, and the innocent creatures like the cow should be protected. You know, and they all agree for all these things and they all have the respective organizations. Uh, when these people come together as friends and they help one another, protect each other, you know, and uh, the, I already know there are people who do that. There are people who gather together like that. Because otherwise what happens, Every everybody is in their own small, like a frog in the well. I do my thing, you do your thing, he does his thing, everybody. Then when, uh, when there is a sudden problem or danger, then suddenly you can't look out for help unless they work in a, you know, unless they actually befriend each other. Mm. 
people with people with common values should definitely collaborate with each other and uh, learn to uh, actually therefore i spoke on the topic of learning to live with differences this learning to live with differences also includes uh, you know dvaita advaita vishta advaita dvaita advaita shuddha advaita achintya bheda vetatva <laughs> organizations with any of these maps uh, actually they all can work together because they all are pointing finger to uh, that uh, sanatan dharma you know uh, which Uh, the basic uh, fiber is almost the same in all of them. Yeah, uh, in my understanding, I f- like, like one example I tell you. Yeah. Like we go for many youth camps. Many of the Maya, the matas, they give us give their matas freely for us for using. Mm. And when we go there, they bring cow's milk for us. You know. Mm. Yeah. So we have a friendly relationship with. Uh, similarly, I, I have been to Swami Narayan in Delhi and uh, other places. They are so welcoming. you know and the the chief swami ji took me around showing all the places so actually those who are following such a pure lifestyle culture there may be differences yeah, some uh, certain differences so we have to learn to live with differences and uh, uh, be united in friendship that's very important and uh, helping each other get protection from each other yeah that is true you know prabhupada also hmm. and then giriraj maharaj told me this in a meeting and i think he has mentioned that in his book also You see that it, the, the Prabhupada lived with this Doctor Mishra of the Yoga Studio. Correct. <laughs> and later on, he came. To, they, he met Prabhupada after Prabhupada had established his con, and they had lunch together, and they had a very cordial talk. Yeah. After that, Giriraj Maharaj asked Prabhupada, "Isn't he a Maya Vadi?" And Prabhupada said that, "Okay, philosophically we argue like anything. Culturally, we are friends." Yeah. So you know what you said about. cultural similarities like okay. yeah how culture I, so i think a b c d e f maybe f there could be some debate not everybody mm-hmm. might accept uh, the lotus feet om tat vishnum paramam padam sada apashanti surayah yeah, the, I mean, yeah. yeah that's not, a word. everybody may not necessarily accept that yeah but even then we could cooperate with when uh, because there are many 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 oh, it, even in the mayavadi is the word vishnu according to them is all pervading they also accept the word vishnu Yeah, that's true. Uh, Vaishnavas will accept Vishnu as the personality of Godhead. Now Maya Vadis may accept Vishnu as all-pervading supreme Brahman. They may accept like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so there are commonalities where we could work. Now, if we take this forward in terms of the Samdham, I was talking about Samdham, Bhed, and Danda. Yeah. And then we discussed about how. the kshatriya responses get can kshatriya job in one sense is diversified into three four departments in today's world and devotees could get into in which of these areas if required so i was making this point that we as a movement yeah primarily on cultivating brahmanical brahmanas yeah so as a movement do you think we have come at a historical stage where we need to consciously focus on cultivating kshatriyas also or do you think uh-huh. that is something which organically will happen on its own yeah actually anything then should be done uh, from the authoritative sanction from the top government hmm? because the, there are uh, certain uh, strictures regulations that anybody see if you want to learn karate or if you want to learn kung fu you know or some self defense uh, that is not considered wrong no problem but if one has to go beyond that hmm? to a point where one has to learn like uh, shooting and keeping a license to gun you know and also that kind of thing it is always best that one uh, joins the army navy air force and things like that and one gets a training from the government and then with government sanction one should arrange for protection yeah otherwise independently doing like uh, like one side remember you were telling in one of your classes uh, you know in certain countries are ready to give Uh, license gun to everybody you know because everybody want to <laughs> want safety if everybody carries a gun <laughs> and people don't have control of their mind and senses you know they they may even shoot each other also you know yeah, that is uh, that risk is always there so what i would say is there is a class chatra class and they should get proper training uh, and they should uh, like you know if somebody is joining army navy air force they may be getting training in some battalion and things like that but how will our temples be protected and all the places uh, be protected so for that therefore i said there should be people after having taken training they should be available for service okay 
<laughs> yeah, they should be available because they these people know the idea of how the protection mechanism should be arranged. Basically, they want to protect the innocent. You know, those who are innocent, those who are peacefully living their life and preaching, and they are harmless, uh, harmless creatures, and they should not be harmed unnecessarily. So they, uh, those who really have feeling, there are many people getting joshed now. You know, simply the josh is emotional. That emotional sentiment will not do anything. They have to do something practical. Mm. And people sometimes make it so political. People keep talking about the past. He did this and he did that, and this king did that king did, and it simply becomes pajalpa, and it is never ending thing. So I would tell them that don't waste your time. Do something practical. Go and join army, navy, air force, and give protection to all the places where the pe- people need protection. Uh, because in the Vedic times, it was not only brahmanas were only living their preaching. Like for example, Vishwamitra is coming to Dasharatha and asking for Ram. He was sending the chaturya. Please give protection for our yagna. We want to do yagna tattaka and all the subahu maricha. They are coming and creating trouble. Mm-hmm. So similarly, every brahmana has the right to seek protection. From the chaturya, and right now what is happening now? You know, people are becoming shudras. Everybody wants money. <laughs> you make money, just enjoy life. Unless a bomb drops on your head, you will not worry about anything. You know, people actually are thinking that you know, just I made my money. This is my little family, and I am uh, eat nicely, sleep peacefully. Uh, so the, the, one has to become selfless to even think about you know how the dharma can be protected. How the people who are propagating dharma can be protected. So that should be. Therefore, the people who have some josh, they are chaturyas, and they should actually under the uh, under the uh, what do you call it permission and uh, uh, sanction of the authoritative uh, order government. They should uh, meet out a protection mechanism. That's what I would say. Yeah, that is so true. It seems that in general, maybe because of prolonged foreign rule in India, yeah, Indians. have become professionally very successful yeah. in their own individual professions yeah but they not become even proportionately socially influential or socially engaged socially concerned say for example jews are a good example that they been persecuted throughout history mm. first by christians then by muslims then by then by by nazis but they have entered into mainstream professions and mainstream fields where they are quite well represented mm-hmm. so i think that what you're talking about this particular concern with only one's own immediate success and concern about a broader community yeah it's something which uh, which it's not that we can now that not that people are not concerned but it's more like a concern at a personal level not at a organized social level yeah where, where, so so many devotees they recently i was talking with some devotees in uk and america and they're telling that uh, that the say for example the media coverage of the events in bangladesh there was very little coverage mm. of the what happened mm. the coverage that came up that was more that there were riots and that, there were there were more muslims killed than hindus hmm and actually and i can go into the history of what happened and how it was covered but the point was that uh, we could we could just blame that the media is biased and media doesn't cover things but then in some ways it is for us to enter into the media it is for us we want, we need to enter and we need to influence and if we are not doing that then somebody is like if we are not telling our story somebody else is going to tell our story Hmm. they are going to tell it from their perspective not necessarily from our perspective so i think what you talk about influencing society in a broader way hmm. this one's individual success that is very important i think in today's world yeah <laughs> and also because of the digital media now lot of fake stories are also propagated huh? so fake not only fake stories fake photos also huh? fake photos fake stories in order to agitate the minds of the people and create a turmoil earlier they used to throw only bomb blast but now they are also creating fake news to agitate the set fire in the minds of the people yeah. to create agitation it's very unfortunate yeah so uh, one observation you'll make with this world the world goes on you know steady state for some time and then there is a disturbance and again it goes on again there is disturbance therefore 
But uh, like Prabhupada says, danger must be there because we have put ourselves in a dangerous position. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we can try our best for protection. Therefore, I was telling something very down to earth. Uh, so just imagine, for example, we have a, a good protect, protective gate and protective compound and some protection mechanism, which is already planned out for the bhaktas, devotees and everybody, uh, you know, for the institution, you know. And then also, as I told you, some people talented in that field uh, come with a plan for such protection. And, uh, uh, and life will go on with that protection mechanism. And uh, if uh, things are overthrown, things go beyond our mechanism, what we have used. Because if you see the number of, I mean, uh, every country has its own weapon mechanism, defense mechanism and everything. And uh, big countries have big amount of weapons. Small countries have small amount of weapons, if you see in the global map, if you see. So therefore, I told you in the beginning of the class, we can only do our best and let Krishna do the rest. We have to ultimately depend on the Lord because we have to do our part. And uh, like Prabhupada went to America, on the way he got a couple of heart attacks. You know, any old man would have taken a U-turn and come back to India for uh, you know, treatment and <laughs> recovery, isn't it? Mm -hmm. But Prabhupada actually remembered the spiritual master's order. He, he said, I'm already old. And I, I wanted to fulfill the order of my guru. He boldly made a forward step. He went to the West and uh, by Krishna's grace, he could accomplish the task. You know? So, uh, we uh, one thing is in this world, right now we are talking about protection. Why? Because something has happened, we are talking. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we cannot get consumed by this thought. Because if you see dharma, then actually one continues doing one's dharma. You know, you know dharma, performing dharma itself is our reward. For us. Huh? So, if I am performing my dharma you know, day after day, month after year after year, at a certain time, some dangers may come. So, some protective mechanism is arranged. After arranging that, we have to go on for performing our dharma peacefully. Mm -hmm. Because in this world, uh, ups and downs will always be there. Because, you know, I won't label any particular religionist uh, 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 or any particular. Uh, that's what I told you in the beginning also. That uh, fanatical, there have been moderate people and fanatical people also like in the past. Ah, there, are, there are kings who are moderate and accommodating, and there are people who are extremist and wanting everybody to, you know, my way is the highway, that kind of people also. <laughs> that is true. Yeah, history has seen both types of people. Yeah. All this, you came back to that point now. We started with how God helps those who help themselves. So we yeah. didn't know about. What we can do to help ourselves. Yes. So we are bringing this point that yeah. we can become obsessed with this alone. We have our own dharma to do. And then if something go beyond our capacity, then then that is the nature of the world, and we have to accept that. Correct, correct. I, I want to tell you one more one more thing also. Mm. Uh, um, like in the like in the history of uh, Sikh gurus, the fifth and ninth guru were executed, you know. Uh, fifth Guru was actually Arjan, Guru Arjan by Jahangir and uh, ninth Guru was uh, Tej Bahadur by Aurangzeb. Yeah. So if you, if you read the history, why they were executed? Because at the time, uh, they had a big following in the country and they were very powerful also. So the kings at the time feared that these people have a kind of political power also. And they may overthrow us and our survival is in question. Uh, so, therefore, they wanted to convert them on a large scale. In the event of not being able to convert, then they thought they will become our uh, 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 enemies and uh, you know, they, will wipe, uh, they will wipe us out. Yeah? So, in this world, always there is a fear about who is my friend, who is my enemy. You know, like that. <clears throat> so, they are called the martyrs. Martyr means one who actually laid down his life to uphold his faith. And not only them, even the Guru Gobind Singh and his four sons, now, if you read about the history of the Sikhs, you will find, you know, they call martyrs because they were ready to lay down the life for their faith, and they, um, and uh, that is one type of, you know, dependence on God. That you know, you know, I will pro protect the dharma, and I will, I am ready to lay down my life if that's what is required. But there is another way. Our Goswamis have protected dharma. If you see our Rupa Sanatan, they were Amar and Santosh huh? when they were called by Nawab Hussain Shah. And Vapa Sincha told that, hey, I found out that you two Brahmanas are very intelligent and I want to engage you in my court for taking care of finance minister and home minister. You know, if you, if you do this, then I will not trouble the Hindu community if you do this. 
and I will take, give you a title of Sakaraman Lake and Dabir Kas, Dabir Kas and Sakaraman Lake, you know, Rupa and Sanatana were given. So they accepted the position for the protection of the community and they served for some time in the government of the king. At a later time, they retired and went to Vindavan and they wrote uh, literature, you know, which now is going all over the world and benefiting all humanity. So this is another type of dependence on God. Huh? So because the Sikhs were Kshatriyas, they were unwilling to bend, you know, they actually said, we will lay down our life, but we will not. It is better to, you know, give up our life for the sake of preserving the faith. That is one type of dependence on God. And Goswamis, they were Brahmanas, they depended on Krishna God in another way. They said, by our aligning with this idea of becoming Dabirka Sakar Malik, you know, the community, Hindu community is protected. And also they did such service for some period of years. At the same time, because the, uh, there are kings also who are moderate, so they were also in Gupta Vrindavan, you know, and also uh, studying the Srimad Bhagavatam and Panditas would come, they would discuss. At a later time, they retired and then uh, took to the wholehearted uh, practice of Krishna consciousness under Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in case they, they, were, they were unwilling to do this, you know, they would have lost their lives and the world would be bereft of the wisdom, what we are all benefiting from now. Hmm. So this is another type of dependence on God. I would never say the first one or second one, one is right, other one is wrong. I won't say that. That is, that is a very good uh, historical example. Uh, that, so that means basically, dependence on the Lord can be expressed in multiple ways. Yeah, exactly, yeah. And it is the Dami Buddhi Yogam, and the Lord will give intelligence to different people at different points. Yeah. It's not just... Uh, Stereotyped. Uh, yeah, it's not just martyrdom is an indication of faith. Yeah. It's also a strategic intelligence and resourcefulness also. Yeah. You can say the Goswami is acted in a combination of Brahmana Kshatriya way. Yeah. So they were administrators. So yeah. They Kshatriya. Yeah. They also had a Brahmanical culture, which yeah. they practiced and they preserved also. And of course, eventually yeah. they renounced, they were completely acting Brahmanical. Yeah. So this multi pronged approach, if we consider. Yeah. If, uh, now, if I was thinking of looking at examples in the tradition of responding to, say, intolerance or violence or something like that, mm -hmm. an example of, say, Rupan Sanatan Goswami. Yeah. Another is that you mentioned about not getting obsessed. Yeah, correct. Our tradition overall has not given too much, uh, how should you put it, too much importance to uh, political upheavals even when those political upheavals were 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 influencing influencing the cult, broader culture. Yeah, correct. For example, Chakravarti Vishnu, he came to Vrindavan soon after Aurangzeb had destroyed Vrindavan. Mm. But he doesn't speak anything about, about <laughs> <laughs> he, is, he is in transcendental ecstasy. <laughs> Writing a Sarat Darshani. Yeah. Similarly, Bhaktivinoda Thakur also. The Bhaktivinoda Thakur lived at the time. After 1857, the uprising was crushed. Yeah. Especially the British, as for the historical level, they were quite brutal in Bengal. Mm. In, in eliminating anyone who was even remote, remotely connected with, they suspected was remotely connected with the rebellion. Mm. But Bhakti Thakur is quite silent about that. Mm -hmm. In fact, he says that uh, he, he focused more on, uh, on teaching transcendental wisdom to people who were receptive rather than getting involved in uh, at a political level. Yeah. So, if we consider further, so these are examples of where we didn't get involved directly. Yeah. But there are other examples also. Say, for example, the Juhu Temple, if we consider Iskand's immediate history, when the Juhu Temple was in danger, mm. and it was, you know, a prominent political leader at that time. Mm. Who did, who, he didn't really care particularly for ISKCON. He cared yeah. about the temple being threatened over there. Correct. And then we were helped at that time. Even the manor was in danger. And Correct. That, so that was also your help. Mm. If you consider you, America when there was this whole the accusation that we were a cult or something like that. Mm. So it was in one sense uh, multiple religions. Yeah. Christians were quite influenced at that time and they felt, some of them at least, they felt that if today this particular religious group is considered to be a cult, yeah. it will also be considered to be a cult. Correct. So, so they also came together. 
Mm. One sense, uh, we have examples of like Rupan Sanatan Goswami like, transcending, mm. and focusing on creating a legacy for the future. Yes. There's also the example of uh, of uh, of aligning with groups. Yes. Our our uh, you could say our cause can be protected and yeah. So it's yeah. a matter of resourcefulness rather than any one stereotype, like you said. Correct. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yeah. So, that's true. so do, do do any other examples come to your mind, or do you want to comment on any of these examples? Mm-hmm. Actually, uh, the topic about the dependence on the Lord uh, or taking uh, the ropes in our hands. It's a very important topic because the aspect of dependence on God, I haven't spoken enough till now. We have been talking about practical uh, protection and all those things. If you see, Arjuna hands over the ropes of his horses to Krishna. Mm-hmm. And Krishna is actually the guide and the advisor to Arjuna. And Arjuna just fights the battle. So in this way, Arjuna is dependent on, on Krishna. And why this uh, point of dependence is emphasized a lot, I wanted to say a few words about it. Sure. Generally, we are concerned about the gross body and the subtle mind. In gross body, we are concerned about the comforts. Uh, as soon as anybody tells me anything, I think about, is it comfortable or not comfortable for my body? <laughs> and, uh, and or we think in the mind, do I like it or I don't like it? Like and dislike in the mind. You know. So to depend on the Lord means to go beyond these two. Mm. Uh, you know, willingness, willingness to uh, abide by the uh, supreme will of Guru and Krishna. So, therefore, the dependence of the Lord is so much emphasized in the scripture because those people who are going to be, uh, you know, go by the body, body and mind, they are preparing, preparing a material blueprint to get one more material body in the next life. Uh, on the contrary, those who depend on the Lord's will. So, the, what is the mindset of a person who is depending on the Lord's will? It is completely open. Yeah? And he will be willing to, uh, you know, change from north to south or east to west, his mindset, uh, as per the supreme will. Mm-hmm. Like, for example, if the Lord tells me to go to north, I will go. If he doesn't go to south, I will go. Uh, therefore, uh, let thy will be done, not my will. Or karishye vachanam tava. So, uh, all the examples, uh, so one time His uh, Grace Burijan Prabhu came to Pune, he was telling us, he was asking all, our, all the brahmacharis, what is one thing that you are uh, learning in the brahmachari ashram? There is only one thing that you need to learn, he said. And everybody said many things, you know, humility, tolerance, patience, simplicity, you know, and uh, non-duplicity, and many, many things they were saying. 25, 30 <laughs> things devotees said, he didn't agree with any of them, you know. He, he said, one, at last one day, he said, obedience. He said, yes, that is it, he said. So, uh, therefore, he will say, obedience to the supreme will is actually called dependence on the Lord. Huh? So, now, why am I bringing up this point? I will tell you. Uh, actually, uh, faith that God knows best. Hmm. God knows best. If this faith is very deep-rooted in our heart, we will not be too much disturbed by the turmoils in the outside world. Huh? Uh, one example I'll tell you, when Dasi Putra in the Srimad Bhagavatam, his mother was bitten by a serpent, she passed away. Hmm? So some devotees have a question, you know, his mother and son, they both served the Bhakti Vedantas who stayed in the Gurukula for four months, Chaturmas time, you know. She did a good service. Why should God arrange for a snake bite for her and take her away and leaving the rendering the child an orphan, you know. It appears like cruelty, you know. Any common man sees, it appears like absolute cruelty. Why Krishna is so cruel? The boy also served prasadam to them and he heard the katha and all. Mother also rendered service. But if you very deeply think, there is one verse in Bhagavatam which says that the mother was very attached to son. She bound him by her affection. And the child also totally depended on her and he was bound by her attachment also. So mother and son, they both had a very strong mental attachment. Just like mother has sneha and moha. You know, mother thinks my son will grow big and he will, you know, pass out and he'll make good money. He will build a house. He'll keep me well. So many people have expectations from their children. And similarly, the son also feels mother is my protector. So Krishna separated the two. Now, because she had done some service to the saintly people, her future life is going to be very bright, naturally. She'll be born in a devotee's house. And uh, this boy was also separated from her, which he considered as special mercy of the Lord. It is mentioned in Bhagavatam. And then he went to the forest and he saw Lord Vishnu. And then subsequently, 
and next life he became an arada also if you see so certain turn of events that happen in this world we only see the present isolated from the past and future mm. due to which our our outlook is very narrow uh, but god sees in a different way he has a very broad outlook he knows what is best so we should have a very firm faith that nothing can happen without krishna's sanction uh, one should have that faith we can do our protective mechanism and we have done it after having done it if something happens beyond our hands beyond our reach then we should accept it as krishna's will and uh, not become faithless you know uh, um, like i had spoken about one uh, you know he is god defeated by somebody you know destroying the temples or you know destroying the this thing i had just spoken on that topic also huh? yeah. because you know yeah just one uh, yeah. you know, and we can go to that topic it's a very important point yeah there are uh, two three different categories in this and maybe yeah. that is where some some difficulty might come up so this principle at a philosophical level that we can say bad things happening to good people bad things happening to devotees or sometimes bad things happening to devotees because of their devotion so like in one sense we could say parikshit maharaj's mistake was just a accidental mistake if you can call it a mistake also yeah to what did he do shamik rishi i do love the lord yeah. yeah but on another level when prahlad was persecuted yeah not even a mistake on his part prahlad was persecuted <laughs> simply a mistake because of his devotion only yeah reason yeah so you know that principle that when bad things happen mm-hmm. uh, that we we should need to maintain our faith that is something which is talked about in our scriptures quite extensively correct correct and uh, in one sense even if there are no riots or no organized violence life itself is challenging and many times this this problem will come up mm. so so that principle that bad things can happen to good people also that is something which is universal mm. but specifically i think the challenge comes when uh, when these kind of events happen is two three things first is that when the bad things happen through a particular channel about which one has particular conceptions mm. so that means say if if i am walking along a road and some car knocks me down mm. i can call it as an accident correct but if that i later find out that car is being driven by somebody who is my enemy ah uh, instigated who is repeatedly acting against me mm. then it becomes a little more difficult correct except that is is god's plan acting through this also mm. in, in in christian theology in western theology not in the christian theology they categorize this as two things they call it natural evil and moral evil mm. natural evil is when say a thunderbolt falls on somebody's house and they die Mm. pandemic happens and somebody dies mm. that's natural evil what moral evil is when people do bad things and victimize others correct so when somebody is out to destroy us yes and uh, to make things a little more complicated that so so when somebody is out to destroy me uh to see that is a part of god's plan that becomes a little more challenging and then on top of that if that person also claims to be motivated by religion yeah then But, then it becomes and they are they are motivated by their conception of god and their conception of religion yeah they're targeting me because of my conception of religion mm then at that time yeah god's hand uh, god's hand in that that variety of bad things okay that becomes a little bit of a more we could say more confusing or polarizing polarizing challenge okay now i understood your point so now do you agree that all through the history we find one country invading the other huh? and uh, and subduing the people of that country and taking over the government and ruling over the people and levying taxes huh? and also making them slaves you no know, we have seen in the past correct now many many such kinds of things yeah so the, in the material world there is always like you know sometimes rajaguna comes up sometimes tamaguna comes up sometimes satuguna comes up uh, due to the effect of kala it is explained huh? so in the shrimad bhagavatam sound canto first chapter <coughs> that is i mentioned about one thing that uh, sometimes lord vishnu he is uh, lying in the anantashesh with sun closed eyes you know in yoga nidra 
and uh, he is above all this mm -hmm. but he has one agent called kala who sometimes activates rajaguna tamaguna who sometimes activates sattvaguna so therefore sometimes the sattva is predominant sometimes rajas tamas is predominant in this world even in the vedic times you hear about you know vishwamitra was showing lord rama that there was a huge mountain of bones which was eaten by the rakshasas and spat out you know so there has been evil even in the past well, millions of years ago also we see that so uh, with that in mind what is my understanding is yes we have to practice our dharma with sufficient protection to the best of our ability mm -hmm. and after having done that arrangement uh, we should sufficiently absorb our body mind our consciousness in such deep absorption that tomorrow if something happens to us due to such danger some inevitability happens to us our consciousness should be so high that we go to the right destination which is back to godhead mm -hmm. on the contrary if my mind is preoccupied with all the evil tendencies of the opposite party uh, and that lifestyle and that perception of me and their wrong con conceptions they carry all those things i keep talking about it um, and we are also thinking that you know before they attack us we will attack them things things like that then those conceptions are definitely making a blueprint preparing a blueprint for the next material body okay yeah Very important i agree with you it's it's like so what you are saying is that we don't no matter what the channel through which something is happening correct no, and uh, whatever channel it is coming it is not coming without god's knowledge mm. because not even a blade of grass can move without his observation he is a observer he is upadrashta anumanta bharta bhokta maheshwara hmm. yeah. yeah i think in the second world war both the british and the germans they were both claiming that god is with us <laughs> <laughs> so in one sense that that can that can also happen yeah so we have that understanding that uh, krishna's plan is always working yeah even through even if there are some malevolent people so we deal with them at a practical level as much as we can yeah at another level if the practical measures don't work yeah and this is this is also within the plan of the lord yeah correct like what lord chaitanya mahaprabhu had to go uh, and cross one particular place so what is a one king told him that it is not very safe for you to go alone you know so he arranged for a boat with a, like you know 10 soldiers and he himself came also you know that uh, the king also traveled with mahaprabhu he was very respectful to mahaprabhu actually and he made sure that he has crossed the because those were dangerous areas from the mountains and the lake and all you know highway robbers will attack and everything so he offered protection and the mahaprabhu further travel like that so in the same manner on the other hand you will find mahaprabhu's consciousness is fully absorbed in chanting singing preaching uh, and the chatriya's duty is to protect such saintly people it is that duty yeah that's so true and uh, maybe just a couple of i think a couple of questions we'll have hmm. i don't want to take too much time so uh, this particular point about uh, so we can broadly say that the kshatriya aspect yes looks at more of the it's not a complete categorizing because everybody has to have holistic vision but we could say to some extent the kshatriyas look more at the immediate circumstantial causes and address them correct they have to brahmanical vision has to look more at the philosophical or transcendental side yeah and also Brahm, brahmanas are advisors being advisors they should have a very big heart and a broad vision uh -huh. they should not be like you know we have kanishta madhyama uttama we say no in our categories of the devotees also in same manner actually uh, for example like chanakya is advising chandragupta or like uh, our Ram, samartha ramdas is advising shivaji maharaja hmm? so because shivaji maharaja and all were trained in such a manner that they knew the principles of balance you know how you know while dealing dealing with the enemy it says you know khalanam kantakanam cha dividega pratikriya upanan mukha bango va durustho va visarjana you know chanakya says that if uh, you are attacked by an enemy you know either you crush the enemy who is unreasonably attacking you or durustho va visarjana you keep a long distance from the enemy hmm. and there is no connection with the enemy he lives in his area you live in your your area so you will find that the vedic kings actually many of them were more on a defensive mode they are in an offensive mode even yudhishthira and pandavas you will see 
you will never hear one instance where you find Yudhishthira Maharaj and Pandavas trying to attack Duryodhana or trouble Duryodhana and other company. <laughs> they were always in a defensive mode. Oh, you, you are feeding poison to Bhima, they were defensive. So, you know, Draupadi is being insulted, Krishna protected her. When they went to Pandavas, went to forest 12 years and one year, Ajnata was, you know, and it was only one last time when Krishna told that this war was inevitable because Kauravas are unwilling to give five villages also. You know, Krishna was ready to go as a Shanti Dut. So, even in the request for five villages, they wanted only survival. They didn't want conquest. Oh, that's true, actually. Yeah. Consider even when Krishna goes to attack, or Krishna goes with Bhishma to attack, with Bhima to attack Jarasandha, that yeah. is in one sense on a petition. Yes. By the kings who have been imprisoned by Jarasandha and who are about to be sacrificed. Yes. To be killed. So it's more of, you could say, but he's doing his, uh, he's, it's, it's a intervention for the sake of protecting dharma. It's not a Correct. or aggressive Correct. kind of activity. Correct. Correct. Mm. But that's true, yeah. <laughs> Therefore, the advisors, the advisors of the king have to be very pure-hearted and actually to be lovers of God. Because one who is the lover of God will, will not even, you know, uh, uh, commit uh, any injury to any creature. No. So, Brahmanas not only depend on Chatriyas for their protection, but the Ramanas also nourish the Chatriyas by the right map uh, to walk the proper path. True, true. The, not to do atrocity in the name of God, you know, mm. but to do the right thing, yeah. So, it's a, at one level, yeah. we talk about the, the Sattva Guna of the Brahmanas. Yeah. As a restraining force for the Rajoguna of the Kshatriyas. Correct. So, if we have only Rajoguna, you could yeah. have a problem that yeah. it will become excessive. Yeah, correct. If we have only Tattvaguna, yes. then we may not be able to do anything substantially assertive also in the world. Correct. I think Prabhupada also, I think there's a quote of Prabhupada where he says, we need Brahmanas of the Kshatriya spirit. Correct. So, there's that balance. Yeah. Not only the Brahmanas Sattvaguna, you know, uh, gives direction to Kshatriya and also pacifies his too much of Josh and uh, Rajoguna. And the one very important thing is you will see the meeting between Kardama Muni and uh, Swayambhavamanu. Mm. You know, you find Kardama Muni is praising Swayambhavamanu that you are boarding the chariot, taking the bow and arrow in your hand and going all around the world, creating terror in the hearts of thieves and rogues and plunderers who uh, create trouble for the masses of the people. So, he appreciated him, congratulated him for his Chatri activity. And Swayambhavamanu said, thank you. Otherwise, I was thinking that when I came to forest, I saw you as a Brahmana, storehouse of austerities and pure qualities. He said that I wanted to be, become like you. But after hearing you, I'm getting encouragement to do my dharma properly. He said. So, Brahmana not only, uh, you know, subdues the excessive Rajaguna in a Chatriya, he also encourages Chatriya to walk the right path also. Okay, that's true. Uh, that's that's wonderful. In one sense, it's not just restraint, but it's yeah. a, it's also you could say direction or focus. What to do? Yeah. What to do and what to do both come in. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. So now, like like if you if you see our Vedic culture was so accommodating that there were nishadas, you know, there were chandalas, there were mlechas. They were having their area to live. Not that everybody was told to become a brahmana. Hmm. In the same manner, all world religious people should be taught that you have to accommodate all the different religions because some of the religions are in Tamaguna, some are in Rajaguna, some are in Sattuguna. But everybody has to have a geographical location, place to live and their uh, freedom to practice uh, without trying to uh, convert everybody to their own. So, converting uh, uh, other religious people to one's own means what? You philosophically present your logic, if somebody is inspired by you, then they should have the freedom to hear. When Sri Prabhupada went to America, many churches opened their doors for him to come and give classes. You know, many cathedrals invited. Many of them, I mean, Pope and every, they were very good with Prabhupada. We, we, had, we read so many conversations, correct, no? Yeah. And that freedom was there and the freedom was given. Yeah, uh, so, yeah, we, we don't convert people by, you know, by sword or by money. That is we, can, yeah, we convert people by uh, giving wisdom. Huh? 
we speak the way it's not even maybe the word conversion itself has become so polarized <laughs> it's more like a elevation or a transformation rather than a conversion correct that's true yeah so people rise from material consciousness to spiritual consciousness exactly yeah that's true and uh, in one sense prabhupada was quite inclusive also that you rise to spiritual consciousness you rise to become lovers of the divine and yeah. if you want to do it through your religious path that's wonderful if you want to do it through the krishna conscious path you are welcome so yeah the prabhupada was also broad minded just going back to one point which you mentioned earlier that i am a little uncomfortable saying that certain religions are in tamoguna yeah not religions certain yeah. Pe- people yeah so like i was telling nishada mlecha chandala I all that category you know sorry so i mean, i am going to continue the same point only but say uh, in today's world to yeah. map those particular uh, nomenclature onto particular communities is going Actually, to people may not know also yeah they may, not, very they may not know also so instead of that we can say the gunas we can say rajaguna tamaguna sataguna habits that, habits yeah i think the point which you are making is that through the example of even nishada the chandalas having places to live is yeah. the principle is of Uh, is of tolerance and living cooperatively ah living correct vedic life is accommodating life accommodating life right vedas can present the purest of the pure at the same time even those who may not be able to uplift themselves to the standard the vedas uh, are so kind to treat them like uh, you know toddlers children and to allow them to take their own time to come gradually either in one life or multiple lives hmm so so That- If I understand right, what you are saying is, if we are truly followers of the Vedas, yeah, then we also need to have that broad mind, that tolerance, that different yeah. people may be at different levels. Correct. And, And at the same time, we should not allow ourselves to be exploited by anybody. You now, this is where a question comes up. Yeah. We say there is tolerance, but can there be tolerance toward intolerance? <laughs> <laughs> so tolerance toward imp- intolerance sometimes leads to impotence on our part. Yeah, therefore, I told I, I just now said towards the end now that you know sometimes see if, on a simple example I tell you one man said you know please can you please give me one corner of your dormitory to stay that's all I need I don't need anything so he ca- came and stayed uh, then he said uh, initially he said he'll pay also for some prasad medal then we said we'll give you free no problem. a lot of uh, for self packing and taking outside and is making his demands more and more and more give me the give me the so therefore you will find uh, uh, i told you that we should not allow ourselves to be exploited uh, in the name of being compassionate so that you call assertive behavior assertive means neither aggressive nor passive hmm okay that makes sense uh, like i allow you to take uh, your freedom and i keep my freedom Okay, so you could say aggressive is more of rajoguna, yeah. passive more of tamoguna. Yeah. Assertive could be satvaguna. Uh, assertive is actually a combination of satva and rajas. Yeah, satvaguna. I think satvaguna guiding in rajoguna. You could say. Ah, uh, correct. So now, if uh, so, in today's context, yeah, if we consider situations like what happened in Bangladesh. Now, yeah. Now, I believe such things will not happen uh, repeatedly or frequently. and so if we talk about uh, the aspect of depending on krishna and and also okay, depending on krishna itself in two ways we can say depending on krishna by doing what we can and by leaving other things in krishna's hands exactly so at an individual level mm. as devotees uh, what do you think an average devotee or a say person who is not directly living in a place like this where they are in danger but what can devotees do at an individual level so one of the things which i say is that you know first of all we have to ground ourselves more in sattva guna and shuddha sattva so that we have the wisdom to do the right thing in our particular situation mm. so our internal sadhana and our practice is important and then second uh, talk about is based on our particular swabhav our particular nature we can find out how best we can help in the raising of consciousness of people mm. both particular or broader also which you would like to say at an individual level what what uh, devotees or practitioners of dharma can do at this stage yeah. one of the things uh, that all temples across the globe did was the harinam protest which we yeah. did it a... most it was most appreciated by everybody across the globe they said uh, how perfect gentlemen devotees are 
you know they have lost uh, two three of the devotees in bangladesh in that unfortunate mob uh, beating and hitting and all that but despite losing some of their members of the society worldwide these people very they made this protest in a very uh, sensitive manner uh, requesting you know protection for the minorities you know and uh, protection protection for their practice and everything so it was very nicely done and, the, and uh, it uh, naturally attracted the attention of the indian government as well as bangladesh government so that was one thing that the devotees uh, could do from all across the globe express their uh, sadness over the loss of the lives of some of the devotees and uh, express their unhappiness in the way the temples were vandalized and you know so and at the same time mm, it was harinam uh, sankirtan praying for the lost devotees they did that so this is at one level we did and at second level worldwide all the organizations should think about that self protection protection of their assets protection of their bhaktas devotees protection of the deities protection of the temple you know protection of the property uh, they definitely have to wake up and think about it and do some practical steps through those who are capable of doing it Uh, yeah like for example there are so many uh, retired men from army navy air force uh, and uh, they don't have any work now after they are retired they are ex service men so they have a very good idea of the protection hmm? so that that could be some like a brahmana can give uh, lectures to such kinds of people and then uh, through the authorization of the government you know arrange some protective mechanism for all the places mm-hmm. you know this kind of thing will be a valuable service because you know like you said no like a, like a man was going to a forest somebody told him where you are going to forest with an empty hand tiger may come better take some uh, tree branch you break it and take it with you he said no who will carry the tree branch it will be very heavy whenever tiger comes i can uh, break a branch and take it he said <laughs> so when he entered the forest suddenly when tiger came it was too late for him to break the branch you know so therefore we should not be lethargic or lazy in the name of you know being in sattva guna and uh, there has to be a protective mechanism in all the properties because the world has changed much now uh, in the vedic times the kings offered solid protection uh, if you see some of the temples the deities could have so much of gold and so much of silver and all those uh, ornaments and everything now we cannot put anything like that now there is no security for the temples uh, and there is a lot of threat and danger and everything so the kings who patronized uh, also built the temples in those days now now to build over an iskon temple you have to collect from the congregation <laughs> and make it now so the world the kali kali yuga is becoming more and more right so therefore as i told you we did a harinam protest as brahmanas that is perfectly all right but then there has to be a protective mechanism given for the temples uh, which which should be inspired by those who have been in defense um, and uh, they should come up with a plan for protection that's one thing they can do um, and also our people have to be enlightened uh, about uh, uh, in the in their uh, Uh, awareness and understanding not to have sectarian views or fanatical views because that creates a, um, material disturbance in a spiritual community for example this kind of disturbance happens elsewhere and that actually affects the spiritual consciousness of the practitioners they become they get phobia you know uh, they become too preoccupied and obsessed with it and they go and talk to other people because of lack of knowledge because of ignorance so that brahmanas can should also have the duty to eradicate that ignorance mm-hmm. like lachaitra mahaprabhu told shiva stakur uh, not to fear in chanting the holy name uh, correct now he told that he made narayani cry out the holy name call the holy name isn't it mm-hmm. so uh, we we also it is our duty to instill confidence in everybody because you know ultimately this world is going to be uh, you know in always in turmoil and today one problem tomorrow another problem uh, you find the problems keep you know they come in different forms and shapes <laughs> but there will be so after having done the first two i told you you know we did harinam protest and we have made some chatriya protection and then people should be their mind should be prasanna chitta we say no they should have a cheerful consciousness um, that arises from spiritual absorption uh, spiritual mental absorption that uh, people should maintain that and know that you cannot completely make this world a 100% sealed and protected world it's not possible mm. yeah no matter what you do in this world there will be problem because that's why it's material world proper compass material world to smoke and spiritual world to fire 
Hmm? No, the smoke, smoke. So you have to actually put your attention like a funkling. You should put it in the fire. <sighs> increase the ritual. And if you put in the chula, stove, and then you increase the fire, then smoke will be gone. Which means if you increase our spiritual consciousness, even in the presence of dangers, you know, we can keep ourselves oblivious spiritually. Oh, okay. Yeah, increase the fire, smoke will be gone. Somebody may say, hey, is it not ignorance that you are not aware of the dangers? Okay, we are aware of the dangers. We have taken some steps. But beyond that, what? Beyond that, increase spiritual consciousness. Mm -hmm. uh, and be willing to face any inevitability that may come in this world, small or big. Like somebody gets a, he is uh, driving a bike, he falls off and he gets a wound in the knee. That's a mild one. Somebody is driving a bike, if somebody comes and hits him, he gets a fracture in the leg. That is more serious. Or somebody is driving a bike, he is hit by a truck, he falls off, you know, on the side of the road and he hits his head on the ground, he dies. That is even more serious. You know, wound, beyond the wound, a fracture and death, these are all increasing degrees. But as Krishna says, you know that I am not the body, I am the spirit soul, you know, then you know that you are quitting the body when you, when you die. So, one has to actually emphasize this knowledge and um, internalize this knowledge so that if some inevitability comes in any of these three degrees, we are prepared for it. Yeah, I think that is what is... Uh, it's so easy to get imbalanced. Yeah. To become too otherworldly or to become too thisworldly. Yeah. And at one level, you know, Prabhupada, who can... We can say Prabhupada was more active than anyone else in trying to, you could say, spread Krishna consciousness and bring a positive change in the world. Yeah. Prabhupada himself, toward the end of his life, he said, Kuchit nahi, when he was asked. Yeah. <laughs> Prabhupada also had that, yeah, how could you say, had that sense of knowing that that's I have a role to play. Correct. I'm playing my role. Correct. And so that's that's where I think Mamai Vamsho Jeeva, okay, we are parts of Krishna, you know, we are not the whole play. Correct. We know what the whole play is. Correct. So we do our part. And that is a dependence aspect. That is a dependence aspect, actually. Yeah, so, so we do our part and that's very important. Yeah. At the same time, we don't think that we have to do the whole thing. And that's where it's, it becomes a, what you said about social media becoming a problem. Yes. Because we get to hear about anything that is happening anywhere. Yeah. I mean, that can become enormous agitation to the mind. Yeah. And especially if you hear such any news, don't believe it immediately. <laughs> Until the total truth comes out. <laughs> that is true. Of course. I don't want to demonize social media because in some ways, at least because of social media, even awareness spreads. Correct, yeah. Because of course, what happens is that the mainstream media is still quite left leftist. So if there had been no social media, what had happened in Bangladesh would not have been known to us also. Correct. It would trickled down to us for after a long time. So it's yeah. good. But and the world, world with all the advancement is becoming more and more challenging and more and more complicated. Yeah. Uh -huh. So, in this complicated world, to keep ourselves simple is yet another challenge. Huh? To keep our consciousness serene like a clean lake. Prabhupada uses these three words from Bhagavatam. Satchatvam, Adhikaritvam, Shantatvam. Huh? He, the Vishuddha Sattva is saying it is completely crystal clear water in the middle of the ocean. It's like that. Satchatvam, Adhikaritvam means no lust, anger, pride, greed, all those things. And Shantatvam is completely tranquil. So, to have consciousness like that, you know, we will definitely require spiritual absorption for that. Mm. Otherwise, the, the, the distracting factors are too many in this day and age. Yeah. So, Therefore, the dependence on the Lord is emphasized. Mm. Why? Because, see, Lord is absolute and He is infinite. And there is no one equal to Him or greater than Him. Uh, and, uh, and at the same time, uh, you know, in the Kena Upanishad, uh, one of the pastors, it says that not even a blade of grass can move without His will. Uh, so, uh, actually, something unpleasant has happened which should not happen. It cannot happen unless it is not that somebody surpassed Krishna's plan. Uh, yeah, nobody can surpass his plan. Huh? Like, uh, like if somebody uh, makes a watch and says the watch is automatic, huh? actually, it's made the watch. Huh? Correct. Huh? So, in the same manner, God has made the world and put it. Huh? It appears that it is running automatically, but He has made it and put it. And uh, anything happening in this world, you know, there are people who are faith destroyers. Hmm? There are others who are faith builders. All types of people are there. There are Asuras and Devas are there in this world. Hmm? And time and time again, the Vedic history has uh, shown us that uh, 
sometimes asuras come to power sometimes devatas come to power and this material world is always in ups and downs uh, that kind of upheavals are very probably upheavals in the material world are quite common in that verse he says yes sarvatra anabisneha satat prapya shuva shubham nabinandati nadveshti tasya prajna apatishtita in that purport purpose says upheavals in the material world are quite common he says that's true You know, I think similar theme is yasman no dujite loko loka no dujite chaya. Correct. Don't be disturbed by others and don't disturb others also. <laughs> Correct. Yeah. That is true. Yeah, that's a very nice word. Yeah. So, just to maybe uh, I just make one point and then you can give one response and then we'll I'll try to summarize. So, if we look at the 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 way, I'm not sure whether I got the answer which you gave. I said that. we talk about iskon as primarily being brahmanical and produce, produce providing spiritual knowledge and as a you are saying as a kshatriya movement we could work with other groups to uh, to create self defense but do you see that uh, any sustained way in which our movement is going in the direction of creating kshatriyas or or cultivating i don't i don't think so our movement's main activity is study the shastras live a pure life and preach krishna consciousness this has been the trend since its inception till date that is the direction in which it is going but there are leaders now concerned about the protection and they are coming and discussing with uh, that for one should discuss with uh, uh, leaders of the country um it yeah those those people who are supposed to offer protection one should discuss in, in relation with them and do the needful yeah it's interesting that i was with bhakti marg maharaj in um, in bhakti marg maharaj pitch in canada so he goes on this walks across the world yeah. across the canada he has walked across america also has walked so he says the for the first questions people ask him when he says you know i am a monk he says do you know martial arts mm. so i asked him how is that so it seems that within buddhism monkhood has been very actively associated with martial arts like uh, shaolin yeah various you know even karate and all very bad it seems in christianity the monk code has not been associated the priesthood has not been associated with martial arts at all mm. now in our tradition as far as i can see there is a culture of akhadas and often the akhadas were associated with ashrams mm. but overall at least in the gaudiya vaishnava tradition or even in the even in the other vaishnava traditions i don't see the renounced order taking up or being trained in martial arts or taking that up specifically of course madhvacharya was a uh, amsha panuman and he is known to have super <laughs> but uh, beyond that uh, uh, i don't see anything else in our specifically in our tradition of of say the renounce renounce order or the people who are directly propagating dharma also taking up shastra shastra mm-hmm. isn't it correct i also feel the same way yeah that's true yeah some amount of i uh, as the world is uh, uh becoming more and more challenging some amount of self defense can be learned huh? but we are beyond that as i told you the actual defense has to come from the leaders of the country and those who are trained to offer protection because you know, kshatriyas are born for that you know their body the psychophysical makeup is like that and they can do things which common other uh, common people cannot do uh yeah yes sir thank you thank you you want to add any further points or maybe i can summarize and then if you have to add something you can add yeah you can summarize you are a expert summarizer <laughs> i don't know about that so today we discussed on broadly the topic of what does depending on krishna mean so we started by broadly speaking god helps those who help themselves so what that means that we have to do our part in helping ourselves and then beyond that we depend on krishna depend on god and this theme it you started with the karma nivadi karyasthe was all both it include both of these and then we went elaborately into the discussion of what as as we can do at a practical level temples need self some mechanism for security just like any other organization like it company would need and there could be devotees if there some devotees who want or devotees the practitioner of dharma want to get into that then there are areas of politics areas of administration what is the what is raw so pa pa na you said okay yeah uh, politics administration and welfare yeah so uh, protection protection administration welfare protection sorry yeah 
so we could the devotees could go into any of these fields so in mansi chatriya fields of chatriya fields become diversified now in today's world politics administration and then defense and also judiciary might be included in it to some extent and then so it there are there is a state security which we largely depend on there can be personal security or professional security that we can rely on and then if some devotees themselves like the fourth level we talked they want to get into the kshatriya zone then it has to be done carefully under guidance otherwise it can be very easily going into the mode of passion and ignorance and of course in the third level we discuss how we can interact and work with some other groups also and there we talked about a b c d e f g so a was absolute truth b is brahmanas 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 yeah. is brahmanas c is cows d is deities deities yeah deities only na e is what is uh, uh, etiquettes and behavior okay etiquettes and behavior f is uh, the lotus feet of vishnu lord vishnu and g g goodness satvagana and h is holy name yeah that is quite nice so broad principles we could work with and um, so we can work with groups who has similar cultural values and that way we can have a more a greater societal influence mm-hmm. and then also <clears throat> while we are doing this when we are working at a kshatriya level it's important that we don't get ourselves caught in sectarianism mm-hmm. so rather than seeing particular ideology particular religions or particular ideologies itself as intrinsically evil or intrinsically bad we need to see from the perspective of the modes so there are people in various modes in various traditions and uh, we need to encourage the moderates encourage the goodness wherever it is to be found and we need to also cultivate goodness broadly speaking there has the, the vedic uh, tradition is a tradition of accommodation that even people who were considered uh, outside the vedic fold they had their place like the nichal and the yavanas so it's not that uh, if there is any conversion it is more of a elevation or transformation mm-hmm. it is not a like not by material domi force or material allurement it is more by philosophical and spiritual elevation that 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 is what is we offer primarily and that now <clears throat> if we consider dealing with uh, intolerance there are two different examples we have the sikh gurus uh, they attain martyrdom uh, the 5th and the 9th and we also have the goswami's example who focused more on within that within that uh, uh, within that overall intolerant environment we could say still they created pockets of pockets of devotion and they created a legacy of devotion so just fighting and uh, attaining martyrdom is not the only way to protect dharma we can also be narada narada also one with hiranya kashipu yeah it's a beautiful example and with kamsa kamsa also yeah narada we work with kamsa and hiranya kashipu and then so in our tradition at one level bhaktivinoda thakur or Uh, vishnu chakra thakur or prabhu uh, they, they seem to not be very particularly concerned about uh, socio political events but when there was a direct threat prabhupada worked with uh, prabhupada and our movement has worked with uh, other hindu groups or even other religious groups for dealing with the juhu issue the manner issue or the uh, brain wa- the cult issue in america so overall kshatriyas can be resourceful and tamoguna means that somebody wants to just eliminate mm-hmm. duryodhana didn't want to give any space to the pandavas not even or to speak five like even the tip of a needle so if that kind of attitude is there then there has to be there has to be opposition to that at a firm level and we need to create the resources for bringing about that kind of uh, resistance or opposition and mostly the wars that we see Uh, the wars were wars were more for defensive or protective purposes not for expansive ex- conquest 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 expansionist purposes and even then the wars did not involve civilian casualties mm-hmm. and that principle we can also apply that in one sense that just yes, there may be some people who are instigating violence but that doesn't mean everybody in that group is an instigator of violence mm-hmm. so we can say there are also civilians in other groups also whom we cannot be targeting and then beyond after after we do what we after we have made necessary arrangements for protection 
then ultimately we have to have faith in krishna that nothing happens without krishna's sanction and accepting that sometimes when terrible things happen we don't get we recognize that as more as a nature of the world and not get obsessed with the particular channel through which it is happening because otherwise we can get agitated we can agitate others and we can dist- become completely distracted so it's not just that we want protection in this life because ultimately this body is going to fall for everyone and if we become too consumed in in becoming antagonistic toward particular groups then that will be our remembrance instead of remembering krishna and again we'll continue in this uh, cycle of birth and death hmm. so while working so the so you could say the balance is that we we do what we can uh, at a individual and a group level collective level to uh, defend ourselves but beyond that it is our consciousness that we need to also defend hmm. that is where we need uh, to Uh, practice our sadhana and stay connected with krishna and then accept that if beyond our efforts things go wrong despite our efforts then then we see that krishna krishna's plan is working through this and not get uh, not get too not get too agitated by what happens and i said in calcutta brother said the krishna is appearing the form of a bomb now like yeah. That's a beautiful example. <laughs> And in fact, it seems almost so transitory. Prabhupada said, "Continue to be cooking his kachoris over there." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I think also a couple of many other points we discuss at a at a smaller level. But individually, what can devotees do is that we can, if we have the opportunity, we cultivate, especially people who already have some defense training, and they have some dharmic inclinations, and that way individually we can learn. even if you want to learn self defense some devotees can learn but getting too obsessed with that could be uh, will be a distraction so that balanced response is dependence on krishna means that we make our efforts we do our part and then we don't put it on ourselves to do the whole yeah. so that is we do our part and then leave the rest to krishna that is the whole we are doing things yeah so okay. i can add uh, i can one i can add one uh, one a couple of uh, small points please there is one point called as hope for the best and be prepared for the worst you know that's beautiful yeah, yeah hope for the best means let us uh, hope that no calamity may befall upon us and life would go on smoothly for decades together uh-huh. that is hope for the best and prepare for the worst means uh, given a possibility that something worst may happen what is the worst thing that can happen so and anything in between can happen also so this is the way one has to prepare for one's oneself in in uh, you know like we say you know do your best this is a formula for do your best hope for the best be prepared for the worst and everything in between be prepared for that so this is one statement another statement tara swabhava karmani ya prashansati nindati sakyashu brashyate swartat asati abhinibeshatah Bhagavatam 11 canto, this verse is there, which says, "Para other people's two things, swabhava and karma, their nature and their activities. If this becomes our absorption, either we praise it or criticize it, then sa ki ashu brashyate swartar. One's ultimate goal of life is vanquished by that. Uh, why? Because asati abhini beshata. One's mind becomes completely consumed by asat. So this is a warning verse for us." that you know don't too much therefore bhagwan sir talked told shil pavpat that india situation you are you know you know the indian freedom movement don't worry about it because this is always going to be like this only but the message of krishna consciousness is emergency that cannot wait so you take it and go to the western world and you preach he told him yeah don't, don't become consumed by the indian freedom struggle situation and this is one one uh, you know somebody is ruling the country now they will go and somebody else will rule the country <laughs> that will keep on changing and there are people who are trying to work about that and they will do it because they don't have a spiritual realization so those who have spiritual realization should propagate spiritual consciousness that is beauty and those who are protectors of the country they should do that work they will do huh? but we should not become consumed by especially those whom we consider as our enemy on a material platform bhuta vaishasam uh word is used in uh, droma rajas case huh? we should not become envious of the bodies of others metal bodies of others and become consumed in our mind about their you know swabhava and karma then that becomes our metal absorption and uh, 
that forms the blueprint for the next metal body that is yeah. i mean i just uh, qualify the statement this is always things are always going to be like this in the world yeah it doesn't really mean that it's like, like, like the way things happen in bangladesh that is that is how it's always going to be in the world uh they are very pessimistic yeah that is uh, it is more like disruptions like you said upheavals are going to be there in the world yes and we do need to prepare for the upheavals but we can't yes. but what what my understanding was pakistan said okay not what not personally against the independence struggle he was against yes. prabhupad diverting his energy to that exactly and, and he saw in prabhupad the potential to practice and propagate la chetna's mission on a large scale bringing about the ultimate good for millions of living entities he saw that potential in him and therefore he told him that you know you you can do this you do and proper took that one word emergency word to his heart you know and wherever he talked proper said my spiritual master said this is the emergency uh, the emergency is awakening spiritual awakening that's the emergency and at the same time material emergencies will come as and when they come we attend to it and again we go back to spiritual emergency again uh, because uh, um, awakening that krishna consciousness you know tatva deham punar janma naiti mamaiti sarjana that result of going back home back to god it comes by that spiritual awakening so therefore then our loop is complete uh, we have done our part we have left krishna what he is the part which he can do and we kept our spiritual absorption intact then this triangle is complete that's perfect yeah thank you guru this wonderful thank conversation you. i look forward to having many more stimulating conversations in the near future thank you for spending your time hey krishna alexna super party jai